There's going to be pushing, there's going to be shoving, there's going to be a lot of bellowing, there could be some wallowing too. It's going to be like Saturday afternoon wrestling when we were kids. Dickie Davis, World of Sport, Giant Haystacks versus Big Daddy. The only thing missing is going to be the gold spandex. It's going to be a phenomenal show and if I'm lucky I'm going to get a front row seat. Now here's a little tip. Dragonflies often return to the same perching spot, so if you're patient and keep still... Now this commandant has been landing on this stick in front of me for some time, so I just thought I'd stick my finger out and see if he'd choose my finger instead of the stick. And it's given me the best views of a dragonfly that I've had all day. Let's see if he does it one more time. Just look at that. Oh, it's like having a pet. He goes off for a little fly, chase another dragonfly, and then he's back to my hand. It's like falconing, but with dragonflies. Look at that. What a stunning creature. There have been days I've been rambling through the countryside and I fantasise that I creep into an old barn and find a 1950s racing Ferrari which I purchased from the farmer for just £100 because he doesn't know better. But it's never come true. Today, however, I wander around this headland fantasising that I look down into the water and see bobbing there black guillemots. And guess what? It is true. Now, black guillemots, you see, are just as special as those racing Ferraris. In fact, on the cliff over there, three black guillemots together, a conflagration of orcs. And look at that, you can see their feet, oh, bit of yawning, bit of fanning, bit of displaying. Whoa. And look, all three sets of feet together, it's a six footer. What makes them so special? Oh, difficult to say, isn't it? Really? I like their simplicity, their clean lines. I mean, they really are sort of 1960s Chanel suits with coal mules. I'd go out with a black guillemot. Definitely. You'd look smart, wouldn't you? Tramping into the Ritz on a Saturday afternoon to tea with a black guillemot on your arm. I could go for that. Look at this. I'm eye to eye with the bee killer wasp. But when I say wasp, you mustn't think wasp of the type that's going to come and pinch your beer and your ice cream or pester your kids in the back garden. These are solitary wasps, not social wasps that build a great big paper nest and will occasionally, if you're nasty to them, sting you. These things are after meat, but they're after a particular type of bee, which they go out, paralyse, and then carry, carry, I mean formidable strength, carry back and drag down into these burrows. Look at that. This wasp has got to be, and hopefully, if I'm not causing it to be too disorientated, it's going to bring that down to one of these burrows. Just like that. What about that? Superb. These animals are absolutely top ten. You hear that one bird over there? I know I look a complete bird, but I don't care because, just listen to that. For me, you see, it's not about the complexity of that song. Complexity, that's classical music. I'm an old punk rocker. For me, it's about the volume and just listen to that. You know, the loudest nightingales can sing at nearly a hundred decibels. Now you're going to love this. I promise you, you are going to love it. And if you don't, then I guarantee that your kids will. Because now we're going to take a look at poo. Because poo is important. Poo can tell you exactly what's living wherever you found it. And this is a collection that I've made today. This lovely little round pellet here is mountain hare poo. It's just like a rabbit, slightly flatter, dropped singularly. And it's this colour when it's dry, and it's this colour when it's wet. And this one here is quite small for the animal, normally it's much larger. It's dark, often black, it's full of hair. The blackness tells you it's a carnivore, so does the fact that it's full of hair. And this is fox poo, and normally it has a very characteristic scent, but I think this one's been a bit washed out, so it's lacking that. This, though, is one of my favourites. 
these lovely little pellets here are ptarmigan poo. Just look at those and if you look into them you can see all of the plant material that the bird's been eating. And you'll find them together because they sit down in one spot and just poo there. Look at this. Red Helleborine. Species of orchid. When I photographed it on my mobile phone, so look at the size of this smile. Red Helleborine and glowworm in the same night. The potential is an order of magnitude unknown to naturalists the world over. I'm really, really pleased, John. Imagine a glowworm on a red hell of that's no, let's not go there. Should we have a look around? Yeah. Okay. Look, look, that's a female badger. There's another one, there's another one. I've got to try and control my excitement and not speak too loudly. A set like this might have as many as 15 badgers living together. There were two there having a bit of a scrap. One of them, I think, is a male, a boar badger, and the other one a cub. They're so close, it's fantastic. One badger has come round the side and could soon be downwind of us. I'm sure she smelt us. And look at that, ladies and gentlemen. That's what happens when a badger gets your scent. And in an ideal world, you don't want that. I think scarpered will be the technical phrase. I can see with my naked eyes, and let's face it, you don't need binoculars, the rictal bristles of a black-tailed godwit. Rictal bristles, nothing rude about that, by the way. Little eyelashes. I can see the eyelashes of a godwit. I've never, ever been to a hide anywhere on Earth where you can get this close to waders. And something just spooked them. But it was nice to see them fly. And I say that with the confidence of knowing that they'll be back in a minute Oh, and there are heaters behind me. This is paradise. It's the best hide on earth. Seriously, if you don't come here, you're going to be barking mad. Absolutely barking mad. This is great. It's a great little reserve. There's only one thing lacking. Cafe. I mean, look, do a roaring trade, wouldn't it? Little cafe, little tea room, nice lady, glasses, you know, nicely fixed hair. Earl Gracer. Oh, yes, that'd be nice. Muffin. <laughs> 